Carnival alone has given me a little confidence. I'm a very shy person, believe it or not. Welcome back to the Cruise World and another episode of Cruise Conversations. Thanks for joining us. We're here once again on the Carnival Horizon and joined by Jonathan Cookie Adams, the cruise director. How you doing, Cookie? Hello, everyone. I'm, I'm great. This is my first cruise. It was mad crazy. Uh, the energy was uncanny this cruise. So it was a good welcome back home. I've been on vacation for three yeah. months now, so I'm officially back into cruising, just enjoying life. So, yeah. So for my first question, I'm going to jump right into it. I know you've, it. you've probably heard this a billion times. Cookie, how'd you get the nickname? Okay, so back in the day when I was part of the entertainment staff, um, when we used to have the DJ the nightclub, um, I was working with this phenomenal cruise director named Jen Baxter. She had a morning show with a phone, and she told all the guests to phone me and want to be some really cool names. Um, my best friend's from England. His name is Sonny. Uh, we were always together, inseparable. So the guests were calling in saying, y'all should go buy Ebony and Ivory. And then one person called and said, you should do cookies and cream. So we ran with that and it became a huge thing, but cream retired and cookie's still here. So uh, I officially am still the cookie that's here years later when I was just a wee little cookie dust. So yeah. <laughs> and that was on the morning show? That was on the morning show. So I mean, that that's interesting because I was talking to Donkey a while back right here in this room uh -huh. and he also got his nickname from the morning show. And you know what's crazy? Who is the people. It's you yeah. all who give us the name and we run with it. And they stick. And they stick. And crazy enough, mine came out during a time when this show called Empire happened, mm -hmm. there was a main character called Cookie there. <laughs> so they even enhanced it even more, because they're like, oh, you know Cookie from Empire? And I'm like, oh, God. But yeah, that stuck with me. So Cookie, prior to working for Carnival, had you ever been on a cruise? Man, I tell you, the first day I stepped on board was my very first cruise. So how, how, did, how did this come about? I mean, what inspired you or, or made you want to work on a cruise ship? Crazy enough, my other good friend and mentor sister, um, I was in Texas one summer, and I said, I just want something different. So she said, come apply for Disney, because she worked at Disney Cruise Line. Um, she knows Princess Tiana. Um, but unfortunately, Disney was full, so the agency forwarded my resume to Carnival. And what was supposed to be one summer has ended up being eight years later. Yeah, 2014 you started yes, working, right? Yeah. that is crazy. Wow. I was just supposed to be here for a summer, but it has turned into one of the most amazing careers ever. So yeah, I've enjoyed the traveling, the people, the food, as you can see. Um, but yeah, it's been a, a really great time. You earned a bachelor's degree uh, in theater from Alabama State University. How does your education uh, help you in your current job as a cruise director? You know what, from someone who's graduated with a theater degree and being on the stage in college, um, I still, for me, I wasn't even prepared because it's different from being a character on stage, what they get on cruise line is raw and real Jonathan Cookie Adams. Like, and then it was just like one of those things where, you know, in this world, um, you have to adapt to so many people from all over the world. As I was explaining today, the hardest part about this job is you can't please everybody. But um, I will say it's given me a stage prep. This, this job has actually elevated my theater career. Um, it's made me more comfortable with who I am. It's made me more comfortable to feel like I can conquer anything. Because you are dealing with people from all over the world. So if you can entertain from all over the world, you can entertain anywhere. So I will say Carnival alone has given me a little confidence. I'm a very shy person, believe it or not. Um, but yeah, I definitely have taken this theater stage presence. You know, I had a little funk to it. You know, people who've come to my deck party know I love to dance. So I definitely, and you know, it's just I have an eye for entertaining the people. So yeah, that's why I use my theater degree in here. So with your ed educational history, I, I think it's probably safe to say that you're a fan of the theater. I am. What is your dream role? My dream role, can I tell you, I honestly wanted to be a part of the cast when I was a dancer in Lion King. Okay. Um, I actually have a good colleague of mine who's now Simba in New York, and it's crazy how life works out. Um, he was the Simba on the national tour. Pandemic came. Um, he went back home to provide for his family, as we all had to do. Um, I think he really he was working at FedEx throughout the whole pandemic. Came out of that and got the role as Simba on the 
Broadway show in New York. Awesome. Um, so I've always wanted to do Lion King. I wanted to be one of the animals because I heard uh, it's very hard and difficult to move the costume and dance at the same time. Um, very challenging, I bet. Very yeah. challenging. I have another good uh, friend of mine. Uh, her name is Benita Hamilton, who's the head hyena in Lion King. So I have friends out there who just tell me about it. But um, my ultimate, ultimate favorite theater show would be The Wiz. Okay. I absolutely, Diana Ross, Michael Jackson, hands down, it's the first show I've ever seen. It was beautiful, so yeah. Very nice. And I love the dancing, for sure. I've heard your announcements. I've seen you all over the ship. Uh, you're everywhere. Can you walk us through a day in the life of Cookie, the cruise director? Ooh, it depends on what day it is. <laughs> um, let's say, for example, a sea day. Um, I typically like to get out about my cabin about 7.38, go to the track and just walk a mile just to start my day, get my body up. Um, from there, I have a morning show at 9 o'clock. From there, another afternoon, like all the way up to maybe 2, 3 in the afternoon. And then I get my most amazing activity. It's called a nap <laughs> in between that. Um, from there, uh, I'll get up and I'll do a couple of shows at night. And then I, I think I'm the only cruiser that does this. Is. I like playing dodgeball. Okay. So I definitely will play dodgeball tonight. Before yeah, yeah, we got adult dodgeball yeah, tonight, right? It, I am excited, but I'm terrified because like I literally tell the people, take it all out on me. <laughs> and like everything is flying at me. And I'm like, oh, my God. Um, a port day is just easy, right? I just wake up, I make sure I get you all where you need to be, and then I can stay on board, or I can get off the ship, and I can go out and have a nice drink, or a nice lunch, or just tour and everything. So yeah, it, is, it depends on what day it's right. gonna be, but yeah, it's very nice here on the horizon. The shorter cruises are a little bit harder. Um, it's quick turnarounds. So today, you're doing this, and the next thing you know, it's a whole new group yeah. in three days. So the energy love, you're doing double the work in three or four days. Basically. So you're good here, you got a six and then an eight, and, right? Oh, and it's more relaxing here. <laughs> I have more time to focus here, but yeah, I absolutely love it. The ports are amazing, the people are amazing, and just, yeah, a lot more time. Like next week, back on boards at 11 o'clock at night. Ooh. Oh. <laughs> You're going to go out then, huh? Oh, you know what? I'm going <laughs> to hopefully stay in. Who knows? I might go out in the room, but who knows? But yeah, we'll see. So you mentioned your cabin uh, and getting a little rest in there. So yes. there's a lot of different types of cabins on this Carnival Horizon from luxurious, spacious suites to small little inside cabins <laughs> like the one I'm sharing with my buddy today. And I know a lot of the crew are in the same boat as me, yes. pun intended. But I thought, shh. But you're a cruise director, an officer here on the ship. Can you tell us what kind of digs they're putting you up in? You know what? We actually have a real, you know, coming from Fun Squad, when you have to share a room with somebody, when you get to this position, you it wouldn't get just the fact of having your own space. We don't care if it's a shoebox or not. <laughs> um, but it's a pretty nice little setup. We do have a nice little suite. Uh, maybe you know what's a good idea? Maybe I should make a video of showing my MTV cribs of my cabin one. Yeah, time. and when you do, we will post it right up here. Please, literally, I will. Um, but it's very nice. We got our own bed, we got our own bathroom, we have our office in there as well. But for the newer ships, like the XL class, um, the cabins for the officers are a little bit smaller. Uh, they're down on deck zero as well. Um, <laughs> nothing wrong with that. Uh, but uh, majority of us stay on deck five or higher as management on the other glide best class and below. But here, I think I have the perfect setup. But I'll tell you, my favorite setup is on the Pride because um, I don't have a bathtub, but I have a balcony. Mm -hmm. So I can leave my balcony door open while I do my office work, and it's nice. beautiful. So yeah, oh, so every ocean every, breeze. Yeah, yeah, every class is different for management. Yeah. So yeah, the pride is the perfect setup. I love a balcony. I'll take a balcony over a bathtub any day. What is your favorite part of being a Carnival Cruise Director? Man, I have learned throughout the years of being a cruise director the platform I hold to take someone from whatever they're dealing with in the real world and make them forget about everything and go home and feel like you can conquer the world. And I love that feeling um, because I'm just naturally being who I am and I'm inspiring people who would have never danced before, who would have never sang before, who would have never gone on an excursion, who just stay in a bubble. And I want people to see the freedom that I have over my life and I want to encourage other people to have that same freedom. Because as I've explained, we've all been through a lot in these past couple of years. Life is too short to live in a bubble. So just go and be and be free and be happy. And you see the difference. And I kid you not, I had a lady go home and quit her job. And I didn't know, she said, I came to your Q&A, you said something. I went home the next day and I quit. I ran into her on another cruise. She said, 
I'm so much happier now. Very nice. Because of what you told me to do. Awesome. I don't I don't make what I need to, but I don't care about that. My happiness is what matters. And for me to get that platform, I'm like, okay, Oprah, watch out. I'm coming through, girl. <laughs> All right, Cookie, uh, this is the part of the show where we get a little off the rails and we ask you some some rapid fire questions. We call this the hot seat. So welcome to the fire. Would you rather face a fork in the road or be forced to pick between three doors? Um, I think I would rather face a fork in the road because it makes me challenge myself to think think fast and think how to maneuver around it versus taking an easy way out. So I, I'm, I'm that kind of person, like, listen, you better fight through it because you're going to get through it. And I will learn something through that lesson, right? Like, that's what life is about. I, don't, I always tell people, I don't lose, I learn. What would you do if you were invisible, you could be invisible for a day? If I could be invisible for a day, mm, what would I do if I could be invisible for a day? Ooh, that's a good one. Here on the horizon. Oh, here on the horizon. <laughs> wow. Let's see. Um, if I could be invisible for a day, I would definitely go to the buffet and take all the food and the ice cream, mainly the ice cream, because I love ice cream. Um, I definitely would pick out all the food that I want from Steakhouse. I'm a foodie. I love food. Like, food is my thing. It's <laughs> again. Um, so I'll be the one sneaking around, taking all the food from everybody around here. If you could change one thing about yourself, what would what would it be? Absolutely nothing. Awesome. I am perfectly happy with who the way God has made me, and I believe that even elevating into this age of 21 <clears throat> plus tax, uh, I think I have done very well. So I am in love with who I am, and I can't yeah. change anything about it. So. And I love that answer. Thank you. Would you rather get your hands stuck in a meat grinder <gasps> or a blender? Probably a blender, because I might have nubs after that meat grinder. I'm lose the whole hand, so. Uh, call me Nubby. What's the worst pickup line you've ever heard or dished out? Uh, worst pickup line. <laughs> Do you work for UPS? Because you're the total package. <laughs> Absolutely not. Now, was that was that given to you Give it to or me. you dished Give it out? Given to me. <laughs> Do you have a favorite T-shirt? And if so, what's on it? Um, I do have a favorite t-shirt. Uh, I guess maybe the shirt of all the cookie sayings. So everything I say on the PA system, everything I say on the shows, they literally listened and wrote out every <laughs> saying and made a whole shirt about it, so I love it. Would you rather have your face printed on money or have a small town named after you? Small town named after me. Cookieville, what, what would it be called? Probably, ooh, ooh Cookieville would be great. <laughs> um, we would do nothing but have parties and sleep. Party during the day, wait, party at night, sleep during the day. I don't know, how would I run my town? As long as we have a Walmart, we're good. That's all I care about. When you were a kid, did you have any posters on your wall? And if so, what were they? <laughs> um, I will say, because I'm an 80s baby, I'm a huge Janet Jackson. There you go. So I definitely Nasty. Love it. Yeah. <laughs> Control, right? That, yeah. Love it. Um, my favorite album is uh, the Hawaiian tour and Velvet Rope. But Janet Jackson was a huge. A lot of people think I like Beyonce. This Beyonce, but people don't know Janet paved the way. She was the OG. Beyonce. She was. Yeah. See, I'm old school, and by old school I mean 21. Plus Would you rather appear as a guest on your favorite TV show or have lifetime backstage passes to every concert you attend? I want to be the guest to appear on every TV show, which I am now. Uh -huh. Speaking of that, you were you were on a TV show, right, with Wayne Brady? Can yes. you tell us a little bit about that? Um, during the pandemic, it was a crazy time, and I had a buddy of mine who called me up and said, hey, I submitted your name for a game show. Um, I was just thinking nothing of it because I was working at Carabas at the time. The next day they called and they asked me for an interview. So they said, well, here's your interview. You passed the first interview. The next one, want to see what you're going to wear. Mind you, we were all struggling. I was Because this is all costumes, right? Literally. Yeah. And I have no money. Hear me when I say no money, just trying to survive a pandemic. I think I went to the thrift store. I found a, a fur vest and some brown pants. It was Christmas season. I went to... Party City, Party City and bought some antlers. I was gonna be at Reindeer, but I was like, what if it doesn't show during Christmas? So then I said, let me put some light bulbs in my hair. I was a deer in headlights. <laughs> <laughs> the name of the show was Let's Make a Deal. Not thinking anything of it. They said, 
Jonathan, we love your energy, whatever. If Wayne picks you, just elaborate on your life. Me thinking nothing of it. I was like, yeah, he's probably not gonna pick me. I'm just here for the face. This man calls my name on primetime television and literally I lost everything I was supposed to say on that moment. <laughs> Here I am on national television. I'm giving shout outs to my mom, my dad, Carnival, everybody. Um, long story short, for crazy how life works, for somebody who went from having absolutely nothing in a pandemic, I picked a piggy bank on his show and it had $21,000. Oh, wow. It. it was a crazy moment. Yeah, right. crazy money. Crazy moment and crazy money. So again, I want to thank you. I know you're very busy uh, for taking the time out. And oh, wow. everyone uh, that's watching here, if they want to follow you on social media, uh, where can they do that at? Facebook, Cruise Director Cookie. You follow me there. Or on Instagram, Live in Theater or Jonathan Adams. I always post up where I'm going to be at, where you can find me, where you can come sail with me. Um, things I do outside of Carnival. Um, so yeah, definitely keep up with me. I got big plans coming, hopefully. So hey, if you've sailed with Cookie before or you are planning to sail with Cookie, let us know down in the comments. Make sure you hit that subscribe button and the like button. And remember, life is short and cruising is fun. We'll see you next time. Ciao, ciao.